some announcements regarding updates to our uh, course website. I think you will see the uh, web browser view shared on your uh, desktop. Now on the browser, uh, this is the website for our course, Basic Electrical Circuits. And then uh, you see some announcements here, which also has the recorded version of uh, the first lecture. As we go along the recorded lectures here, you can use these to uh, review or in case you miss some lecture, you can also use these things. And here you also see the class schedule and uh, uh, some tentative uh, list of topics that we are going to cover in every lecture. This is only tentative. It will be revised as we make progress through the course. And again, here also you have links to recorded lectures as well as to the discussion forum. Now, the discussion forum you can use for asking questions and I will answer them at my convenience. Okay. With that, uh, let's get started with uh, today's lecture. In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, what a volt is and what a current is and related them to the fields. We also described why we can describe everything we want uh, with only voltages and currents without going down to the level of details that we do in electromagnetics, that is the with the fields and so on. Okay, And under certain conditions, we saw that uh, there were two laws that were true for voltages and currents. One the Kirchhoff voltage law, which says that the sum of uh, voltage drops taken with the appropriate polarity uh, around the loop is 0 and the other one is Kirchhoff's current law which says that the sum of currents entering a node or sum of currents leaving a node is 0. Now Kirchhoff's voltage law works under the assumption that the rate of change of magnetic field cutting the loop is negligible and Kirchhoff's current law works under the assumption that there is no local charge accumulation. Okay. Now both these assumptions turn out to be uh, true for a wide variety of uh, practical circuits that is why we are able to use them. Now there are conditions under which it is not true. Basically, uh, during the time period of the signal, if the circuit is physically so large that it takes so much time for, uh, uh, let us say, the electrical signal to go from one side of the circuit to another, then these things will not be true. And a very common example is an antenna. Now, many of you would have seen antennas which are basically just a wire hanging in the air, and but current is driven into it. Clearly, current is not going off into the air. What happens is that the current alternates back and forth within the antenna. And if you look at different parts of the antenna, they will have different currents. Okay. KCL is clearly not true in that case. But besides that, KCL is uh, true. Okay. When you are not talking about such large circuits, large meaning, large compared to the electrical wavelength, KCL is true and as is KVL. Okay. Now, before I uh, go further, if there are some uh, important doubts regarding what we covered in the previous lecture, I will go over them. Okay, so it appears that uh, there are no questions, so we will continue with the lecture. What we will do in this lecture is to discuss basic electrical elements, that is two terminal elements and uh, uh, see their characteristics. Okay.
So before that, let's see what an electrical circuit is. It's an interconnection of uh, electrical elements and electrical elements are some things. We will see examples of that which uh, take some voltage or current and manipulate them in some way. Okay. So, every electrical element is defined by at least one voltage and a current. Okay. So, every electrical element it turns out will have at least two terminals. I will show uh, the terminals here and as I emphasized in the previous lecture, a voltage is applied between two terminals and a current is measured into this terminal. Okay. And the same current will come out of it if it is a two terminal element. So, electrical circuit will consist of interconnections of elements which can be either two terminal elements or uh, it can have more than two terminals. Okay. The initial examples that we will see will all consist of just two terminals. And so, two terminals is the minimum number of terminals we need to have to have a meaningful definition of voltage or even a current. Okay. Because with a single terminal we do not know the voltage with respect to what that is that we are measuring. And similarly, if you push in a current into a single terminal, there is the question of where it will go out. Okay. So, we will have two terminal elements. or maybe more than two terminals okay that is more than or equal to two terminals now in this course we will not worry about how to make these uh, different elements but we will only uh, take their uh, characteristics in terms of their voltages and current and uh, use them to uh, make some circuits and analyze the circuit okay Now, the very first element that we will take is what is known as independent voltage source and this is denoted by a symbol which has a circle with plus and minus mark and what is given is the voltage in this polarity and that is equal to let us say some V naught. Okay. So, this has two terminals and what this is saying is that the voltage source will maintain a voltage of V naught between this terminal and that terminal. Okay. Now, one of the things I have to mention uh, before we go further is the convention that we will take for uh, describing the current currents and voltages of uh, two terminal devices. So, what is done is to describe relationships between the voltage and the current. Now, the voltage let us say it defined with this polarity that is I call this terminal A and terminal B and I define voltages with A being positive and B being negative that is I measure the voltage of A with respect to B. Then I will also specify the current that is going into the terminal A. Okay. Now, of course, it is understood that the same current will come out of terminal B. Now, we have to have this convention so that there is no ambiguity. Okay. Now, we know that a voltage can be measured of A with respect to B or B with respect to A. Similarly, current going into A can be measured or current going into B can be measured. Now, what is important is that the definition of voltage and current be consistent. So, if the voltage V is defined with A being positive and B being negative, then the current I is measured with uh, measured as going into the terminal A. Okay, and this is known as the passive sign convention. And for every element, we are going to use this. Okay, that is the current I. goes in 
into positive terminal of V. What is meant is the terminal uh, which is defined as plus while defining this voltage. Okay. So, for the voltage source, I have to define the current as going into the positive of this V. Okay. Now, this plus and minus signs inside the voltage source only denote the definition. The value of V naught itself could be positive or negative. Again, this is some source of confusion. I don't necessarily mean that because I put plus on top and minus on bottom, this V naught is always positive. Okay, I could define it any which way. This uh, these signs are used so that I can use a consistent uh, direction for voltages and currents. Okay, while defining them. So what this says is this terminal A and terminal B, an independent voltage source maintains. Terminal A above terminal B by an amount V naught. The voltage at terminal A is maintained above the voltage at terminal B by an amount V naught, and the current can be anything. Okay, it's not restricted by the voltage source. Is this fine? So that's like a source of voltage and an analogy uh, could be made to an infinitely large reservoir which will maintain its level. Okay. Now you can take water out of this reservoir but it's not going to change its level because there is infinite amount of uh, water in it. Similarly, a voltage source is a source of infinite amount of current. It can uh, You can draw any current from it but it will still maintain the one of the terminals to be V naught above the other terminal. Okay. Now, it's very common to uh, draw graphs of I versus V to obtain a graphical description of the same characteristic. Okay. Now, I would like answers from the participants. What would this look like? The I versus V curve for a voltage source. Okay, there is a raised hand which I have approved. Please ask your question. I think somebody uh, raised their hand in order to ask a question. Please go ahead. Okay. So, a lot of people have answered this and it's pretty obvious. Uh, v equals V naught. That's all that's there to it and I can be anything. So, this will be a vertical line on the IV plane at V equals V naught. Okay. So, this is the characteristic of a constant voltage source. Now, the next element we'll look at will be a constant current source. So, 
So this symbol means that a current of I naught is flowing from A to B. Okay. And if we have to measure the voltage across this, we'll do it with this polarity. Okay. Again, there is a question. Please ask. I'm not able to hear any questions. I mean, uh, somebody raised their hand and I approved the request. Okay, let's go ahead with the lecture. So, as per our passive sign convention, uh, the voltage will be measured like this and the current I would be flowing that way. And In the case of a cross, it will maintain a current of I naught. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Hello. No, Hello. this is an independent current source whose value is a constant. Sir, we are talking about constant current source or independent what do you current mean by source? So, uh, we should write it. Uh, see, last. Constant yeah, current so that means that it's a constant current. See, first of all, uh, we have to different. define so what it is independent all, with respect to. Independent voltage now, uh, in the initial part of the course, we will deal with things that are constant with time. Okay, so that is one uh, definition of what is constant and not. Here, uh, what is meant by independent is that it's independent of any other quantity in the circuit. Okay, so that's what is meant. Okay. No, no, you can uh, write both. The constant yes. usually refers to constant with time. So what That's what we are talking constant about. But independent means independent, independent uh, of other quantities, other electrical quantities in the circuit. And soon uh, we will come to dependent sources. Okay. So now, uh, so this is a constant current source, which is, of course, independent. And if I plot I versus V for this, it will be a horizontal line with a value I naught. Okay. So what this symbol means is that it will maintain a current of I naught through it regardless of its voltage. Okay. So the voltage can be anything, but the current value will be. I not. Now these are uh, useful idealizations of uh, some components that we actually encounter and these are also the sources that will stimulate our circuit. Okay. Now in case of uh, electromagnetic fields you know that charges are the primary source. You place a charge somewhere and it will create an electric field and then if the charge is moving and accelerating it will also create a magnetic field and so on. Okay. But uh, in our case, we will not go down to the level of uh, fields, but we will deal with uh, these voltage sources and current sources as stimuli for our circuit. Okay. And it appears that uh, some people are having some uh, difficulty uh, with the bandwidth, so I am going to pause the camera for some time.
Now the next basic element that we will consider will be a resistor. Okay. And as usual, we define the voltage in some way. Okay. Now I have chosen A to be positive and B to be negative, but you could easily do it the other way. But what is important is once you have chosen the sign of V, you should be looking at I going into the positive terminal. Okay. Now this is the sign convention that universally follows. So that's what you must use. And I think all of you are already familiar with uh, the relationship between V and I uh, for this particular element. V would be equal to I times R. Okay. And this is the famous Ohm's law. And we can also write I to be G times V. Okay. Where this R is the resistance and this G is the conductor. Okay. If we plot I versus V for a resistor, what is the kind of plot that we are going to get? I would like some answers from participants on what is the plot that we will get if we plot I versus V for a resistor. Yes, I can. Okay, I am not able to hear the question. First of all, somebody commented that there is no video. Because of bandwidth constraints for some users, I am now not sharing my video. I am only sharing the uh, board on which I am writing. And many people answered this question as well. Uh, the answer is pretty obvious. It is a straight line passing through the origin. And the slope of this would be the slope of this would be G, the conductance G. Okay. Is there a problem with audio? Can you hear me, sir? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? What is the question? Oh, okay, let's deal with that later. Okay. All right. Okay. okay, some people said uh, there is no audio. If this is the case, please type it in the chat window. And I have disabled the video because uh, some people had a very low bandwidth and with the camera on, it was taking a lot of their bandwidth. But if there is no audio, if you are not able to hear me, then please type it into this.
Okay, it appears that the audio is fine. So the I versus V characteristic for a resistor would be a straight line passing through the origin and that's quite important and the slope of that would be G. Okay. Now let's quickly look at how a resistor is made. This is not the main focus of the course, but this you can think of as some general knowledge. The easiest way to imagine a resistor that is made, uh, although it may not actually be made this way, is to have a slab of some material. And you can have contact at this end and the other end. Okay. And this will serve as the terminals to which you can apply either the voltage or the current. Okay. So you can apply a voltage here and you can measure the current there. And with, as we said earlier, we would be related to I by this relationship. Okay. So now what happens in a resistor is that uh, electrons will be accelerated by the field created by the voltage applied between the two. But of course, it is not moving in a vacuum, so it will accelerate a little. It will collide with some fixed charges in the lattice of the material, then it will start accelerating again and so on. And depending on that uh, material, it will acquire a certain average uh, speed and that will give you a certain average current. Okay. So you need the knowledge of electromagnetics and materials to calculate the resistance for a uh, given material. Okay. But we will not uh, go into those issues. We will take the resistance value for granted okay, and then use that. Now for a slab of this type, let us say this dimension is W and this dimension is L and the thickness of this is T. I think many of you already know that the resistance R will be the resistivity rho times the width of the material times thickness that is the cross section area across which the current is flowing the area of that divided by the length that is the length along which the voltage drop is measured. Okay. So this is the formula for the resistance and it is quite simple for a, a slab like this but the resistance itself could be made in any number of ways. You could have uh, uh, resistance uh, which is coiled into a spiral and so on. In those cases, the formula will be complicated, but what is important for us is the relationship between I and V and it will always be simple like this. Okay? We will not worry about how to calculate the resistance for a given physical structure, but we will take the resistance as granted and we will use this model. We will use what is given here, V equals IR or I equals GV and sometimes we will use this graph. Okay. Now there is some uh, comment in the chat window. Somebody said that it is a straight line uh, passing through the origin with 45 degree slope. Okay. Now here we have to understand that the x axis and y axis have different dimensions. So measuring the slope as 45 degrees has no meaning. Okay. That will be meaningful only if they have the same dimensions. Then you can say the slope is unity. In this case, the slope is uh, in conductance which has some dimensions. Okay. So as you know, the resistance is measured in uh, ohms with this symbol and the conductance is measured in Siemens and we use the symbol S. Okay. So that is the definition of a resistor. Okay. That is, once we define the relationship between the voltage across the resistor and current through the resistor, our job is done. We have described the resistor. So what does the resistor do? If I connect a voltage source and a resistance like this. It is pretty obvious that the voltage across the resistor equals the voltage applied by the voltage source. Okay. 
So this is V0 and V0 is applied across the resistor. Actually, this is a very trivial application of Kirchhoff voltage law. If you count the drop from here to there and there to there in the resistor, the sum will be equal to 0. Okay. So under these conditions, V will be equal to V0. This is the KVL and this is so obvious that we do not think of it as application of Kirchhoff voltage law, but that is what we are doing here. Okay. Now, because uh, voltage V0 is applied across the resistor, a current I which is V by R which is V0 divided by R will flow through the resistor. Okay. And that of course has to come from the voltage source. So, the voltage source will supply a current of V0 by R. Okay. Now, whether you uh, apply a voltage or apply a current, the resistor behaves in the same way. You can think of it as uh, the current generated by an applied voltage or a voltage generated by an applied current. So, I could also do this. Now, let us say I equals I naught that is what this is saying is this will maintain a current flowing from top to bottom equal to I naught through the current source. So, that means that the current flowing here will be equal to I naught. This again is a trivial application of Kirchhoff's current law. The current entering this node here equals the current leaving that. That is the current supplied by the current source equals the current flowing in the resistor. Okay. And in this case, the voltage across the resistor, it has to be measured like this because the current is flowing downwards through the resistor and that will be equal to I times R which is I naught times R. Okay. So, there is a question from uh, Subhashish. Please go ahead. Subhashish, go ahead. Okay, it appears that he has dropped off. Now, so I think all of you would already be familiar with these cases. That is, if the voltage is applied across the resistor, we will have a current V0 by R flowing through it or if my current is applied, uh, current source is connected to a resistor, current I0 will flow through it. In this case, you will get a voltage drop of I0 R and in this case, you will get a current of V0 by R. Okay. Now, this comes from very trivial applications of uh, KVL and KCL. I am not going to describe that. If you want to, you let me know and I will do that. But it is pretty obvious that the same current is flowing in the voltage source and the resistor here and in the current source and the resistor on the right hand side. Okay. Now, one of the properties of a resistor, now before we go there, let me uh, look at what happens when uh, voltage sources are connected in series. Let us say I have a voltage source of uh, voltage equals V1 and another one whose voltage equals V2 and they are connected in series. Now, what does series connection mean? Series connection means that for two terminal elements, you pretty much connect one on top of the other. That is, there will be one common terminal and the important uh, criterion for whether things are connected in series is whether the same current I is flowing through them. Okay. Now, because uh, the bottom terminal of the upper voltage source and the upper terminal of the, the top terminal of the lower voltage source are connected together. By a trivial application of uh, Kirchhoff's current law, the current flowing downwards from the upper voltage source has to flow into the lower voltage source. The same current is flowing. Okay. So, this is what is implied by a series connection.
Okay. Now, again, if you measure with respect to this, the voltage drop here is V2, and if you measure with respect to this, the voltage drop here is V1. That's what is given by not in this polarity, sorry, in this polarity. So, again, by a trivial application of Kirchhoff's voltage law, if I measure from here to there, the voltage will be V1 plus V2. Okay. So, if you connect voltages in series, the voltages will be summed together. Please go ahead with the question. Yes. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so again, this is a confusion uh, I'd like to clear right at the beginning. The question is, in this uh, circuit, the current is flowing in this direction, okay, in this direction. That is, it is flowing from uh, bottom to top in the voltage source and then top to bottom in the uh, resistor, okay. Now, when I showed the definition of the uh, independent voltage source, I marked I like this. Now, like I emphasized then, this I does not say that the uh, current is flowing this way, okay. It is only measured this way for the sake of plotting and for the sake of convention, okay. Now, if you look at this graph, what it says is this value of I can be anything. It can be any positive value or any negative value. Now, what it means in this particular circuit, let me uh, show the two parts uh, separately. I will measure the voltage across the voltage source in this direction and I will measure the current through the voltage source in that direction. Okay. And for each element I will follow its convention. I will measure the voltage across the resistor in that direction and the current through the resistor in that direction. Okay. Now clearly by KVL, Vr equals Vv which is equal to the voltage source value V0. And by KCL, applied at this node, IV plus IR will be equal to 0 or IV equals minus IR. And IR itself is given by the property of the resistor which is V0 by R. Okay, IR will be Vr IR will be VR divided by R and that happens to be V0 by R. And IV happens to be consequently minus V0 by R. Okay, that is for this particular circuit. And there is no contradiction here because this only shows the direction in which I have measured the current through the voltage source. But this graph tells you that it can be either positive or negative. Okay. Now, in that particular circuit, it happens to be negative and it happens to be equal to minus V0 by R. I hope that clears the doubt. Is that okay? Please go ahead with the question. Sumit. Are you Dubai? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Sir. Uh, yeah, sir, please go ahead with the, the previous in the previous in the previous explanation. 
uh, you said uh, that uh, the uh, the voltage is minus uh, matlab uh, current is i equal to minus v not by r the current as measured in the voltage source as per the convention that is minus v not by r yes sir so okay. uh, shouldn't we follow single convention shouldn't we follow single convention there either take it from the positive side or negative we are following two conventions no, no. for resistance different and for voltage source different. no no i have used exactly the same convention for resistors and voltage sources and i will use it for any uh, two terminal element okay so for each element sir in the last circuit you had for all elements if i define the voltage like this okay with the upper terminal positive i will measure current flowing into the positive terminal of that v okay that is current flowing into the upper terminal and that is exactly what i have used for the current source here the voltage source here and the resistor here okay ir is uh, flowing into this plus sign of vr and iv is flowing into plus sign of vv okay so that is just a convention for denoting the relationship between voltages and currents okay it has nothing to do with which way the currents are flowing now depending on the depending on the uh, circuit connections and element characteristics these currents could be positive or negative in case of a resistor it says that if you have vr defined like this and ir defined like that vr will be ir times ir vr ir times r okay that is ohm's law similarly for a voltage source it says that if i have vv like this and iv defined like that vv will be some fixed value v not and iv can be anything either positive or negative okay so i have used the uniform convention sir, if now sure. for a voltage yes sir if any circuit is given uh, then we have to independently take the elements and mark them positive negative and then we have to go conventionally rather than looking at the circuit as a whole no no first of all if it's a small circuit you may not have to do it systematically but uh, when analyzing large circuits this is what you will do okay so this is the uh, convention that is used for uh, showing the characteristics of the element okay now whether the current is positive or not it depends on the circuit like i said in the very first class i can show a wire with a to b and i can mark i equals 1 ampere and similarly uh, this is exactly the same as saying the current is flowing from b to a which is minus 1 ampere okay similarly if i have two terminals okay sir i can say this is 1 volt and that is minus 1 volt okay so these two are exactly the same okay, so i can say a is above b by 1 volt or uh, b is above a by minus 1 volt okay okay i will go ahead with the lecture so now if i have voltage sources in series uh, the total voltage will be v1 plus v2 this is again by some trivial application of kirchhoff's voltage law okay now let's take three cases i apply v1 across a resistor r the current flowing would be v1 by r similarly if i have a voltage v2 applied across a resistor the current will be v2 by r and if i have v1 and v2 in series applied across the resistor the voltage across the resistor will be v1 plus v2 and the current through the resistor will be v1 plus v2 divided by r which is v1 by r plus v2 by r okay the voltage across the resistor here is v1 the voltage across the resistor here is v2 now if we think of the voltage as cause and current as effect it could be uh, both ways for a resistor 
But if we think of the voltage as a cause and current as the effect, you see that here I have a cause uh, equal to V1 and I have some resulting current. Here I have cause equal to V2, some resulting current. And here I have a cause that is the sum of these two, okay. That is the cause. And if you look at the result, that also happens to be the sum of the individual results, okay. That is, if I apply voltages V1 and V2 separately to a resistor, I get currents of V1 by R and V2 by R respectively. If I apply a voltage V1 plus V2, I will get the sum of individual currents, okay. Now, this property is known as linearity. In general, if you have any system which has a certain cause and a certain effect, I can apply different values of cause uh, individually and I can measure the different effects. If I apply all the causes together, all the uh, results, all the effects will be summed together, okay. So, that is the meaning of linearity. That is, uh, if you have uh, stimulus or stimuli which are combinations of certain uh, values of stimulus, then the responses will be sum of individual responses. Okay, and this is known as linearity, and this will be exploited very heavily in our analysis of circuits. Uh, linear circuits form a very large class of useful circuits, and mainly in this course, that is what we will be analyzing. Okay, and any element that follows this is known as a linear element, and obviously, a resistor is a linear element because if you apply a cause that is the sum of causes, you will get an effect that is the sum of effects. Okay. Now, the question I have is, we have discussed three elements, uh, in, an independent voltage source, an independent current source and a resistor. Now, please let me know if uh, the voltage source and the current source are linear or not. Oh, I got some responses and uh, some said they are linear, one person I think said they are not linear. Again, the way to evaluate this is to see whether uh, the effect is proportional to the cause or if you have individual causes, will the effect be summed up, okay, when you sum the uh, stimuli, okay. Now, let us consider a voltage source. Or perhaps uh, let me take a current source because that will be analogous to this example. Now let me copy over this whole thing. Instead of uh, resistors, let me have current sources. Okay. Let me have a current source. Why not? And here. I will have I naught and here I will have I naught. Now clearly the current in this case is I naught, the current in this case is also I naught and the current in the third case is also I naught, okay. That is here I apply V1, the current anyway is independent of what is applied to it, so it will be I naught, here also it will be I naught and here also it will be I naught. So, although I apply a voltage that is uh, a sum of the individual voltages here, that is here I have applied V1, here I have applied V2. Now, if this principle, that is if uh, uh, combining the causes will give you a combination of the effect, if that is true, 
then this current should have been 2 I naught, but it is just I naught. Okay, so in fact, it's not equal to the sum, right? The resulting current is not equal to the sum of currents in individual cases. So this says that the current source is not linear in the sense that a resistor is linear. Okay. So what uh, what says if something is linear or not? If it obeys the principle of superposition, and what is the principle of superposition? The response to a combination or sum of inputs is a linear combination that we are talking about is the sum of uh, responses to individual inputs. Okay. If this is the case, this was true for a resistor, then it means that it obeys the principle of superposition and if it obeys that, it implies linearity. Okay. So, a resistor is linear, a voltage and current source are not linear. Okay. Now, this has nothing to do with uh, the characteristics being a straight line. Okay. Sometimes that is what is called linear. But here, uh, for us, what linearity means is whether it applies, whether it uh, obeys superposition or not. Okay. So now I have another question for the participants. We draw these IV characteristics, and I showed you that the current source is not linear, and in a similar way, voltage source is not linear also. Okay. You can apply two individual currents to a voltage source. You will get some voltage, and if you apply the currents together, you will get the same voltage. So that is also not linear. And we have this IV characteristics that we have drawn. So, what is the uh, what feature of the IV characteristic guarantees that the element is linear? Okay, that's my question. Now, I have a number of uh, responses. Basically, if we have a two terminal element, then if the IV characteristic passes through the origin, that is linear. Okay. And clearly, this is true for a resistor, but for a voltage source or a current source, it is not true. Okay. So, resistor is linear and a voltage source and current source are not linear in that they do not follow superposition. Now, just uh, some more details of what is uh, superposition. Let us say you have some system. Okay. I will show it in an abstract way like this. And here we are talking about 
uh, two terminal elements whose uh, stimulus could be a voltage and the response current or vice versa. So, let us say you have some input and it has some output. Okay, I am here talking very generally, I am not saying what system it is and what uh, input output it receives and so on. So, first of all, for linearity, y must be 0 if x is 0, okay. otherwise you can show that it cannot be linear. Now, if x1 gives you y1, then if it is linear, alpha times x1 will give you alpha times y1, okay. And similarly, if uh, x1 results in y1 and an input x2 results in an output y2, an input of x1 plus x2 will result in an output of y1 plus y2, okay. Now, these are not independent statements that I am making, some of them imply the other, okay. So, these are all uh, necessary conditions. Now, this says that if you have the IV characteristic, it has to be passing through the origin, okay. Now, let us consider uh, some other uh, uh, simple two terminal elements. This we will just look at the uh, characteristic now and we will analyze circuits with capacitors and inductors later, but uh, if I look at a capacitor like this and define the voltage Vc in this as usual, I have to look at the current in this direction. So, again, it does not mean the current will always be flowing this way. This is the current that I will measure, okay. You want to measure current, I have to choose some direction and this is the direction that I am choosing. And you know that IC will be some parameter of the capacitor C times the time derivative of the voltage across the capacitor, okay. And if I invert this, I can write the voltage across the capacitor as 1 over C integral IC dt, okay. Now, one of the things about the capacitor that distinguishes it from a resistor is that the value of the voltage across the capacitor depends on the current not at the present time, but all of the past time, okay. Whereas, for a resistor, the voltage across the resistor at any instant is dependent only on the current at that instant, okay. V equals IR is true even if V and I are varying with time. And for each instant, V will be equal to IR. That is, the current at each instant will depend only on the voltage at that instant or the voltage will depend on the current at that particular instant. Whereas, the same is not true for a capacitor. The voltage across the capacitor depends on not only the current at the present time, but also the history of the current, okay. Now, this is the definition of uh, uh, the IV relationship of a capacitor and because it is related by this derivative, we cannot plot I versus V, okay. We can do that only when uh, the element is memoryless, that is the current and voltages are related only at that instant of time, that is current in that instant is related only to the voltage at that instant of time, okay. But uh, this gives you the relationship just like we did for the resistor, except there it is a slightly more complicated, it is a derivative. Now, my first question to the participants is, is the capacitor linear or not? Now, I have a number of uh, responses, a majority of them uh, say that it is not linear or a couple of people said it is linear and somebody asked if uh, I versus V is a straight line, like I said we cannot plot I versus V for this because 
uh, if you think about it, uh, that is possible only when the voltage at this at this instant of time is related to the current at this instant of time. Okay. Uh, in this case, that's not true. The voltage at this instant of time depends not only on the current at this instant, but also on all the previous instants of time. Okay, on the history of the current. So we cannot plot I versus V, but we can still test for linearity. How do we do that? Let's say I apply V1 across the capacitor. There will be a certain current I1, I. Uh, which will be C times the time derivative of V1. Okay. Now, first of all, I am assuming that this voltage is varying with time. Now, if it's not varying with time, the formula still applies, but the current will be zero. That is, if you apply a constant voltage across a capacitor, there will be no current flowing through the capacitor. So, the more interesting thing is when uh, the voltage across the capacitor is varying with time. If that's the case, the current will be uh, related to, or it will be proportional to the time derivative of the voltage. Okay. Now, instead, if I, if I apply V2, the current, the new value of the current will be C times dV2 by dt. And finally, I could apply the two together. Okay. Exactly the same experiment I did with the resistor earlier, V1 plus V2. In this case, the new current would be C times d by dt of V1 plus V2. But the time derivative of sum of two quantities is the sum of individual time derivatives. Okay. So clearly, the responses are sum of individual responses and linearity is indeed true. Okay, so this is how you test for linearity. I applied V1, found the current. I applied V2, found the current. I apply V1 plus V2. What I say is that uh, the current will be the sum of the individual cases and a capacitor is therefore a linear element also. Okay. The IV characteristic may be more complicated than that of a resistor, but it is still a linear element. Okay, I hope that is clear. Now, there were some comments. Somebody said that it is not a dissipative element. That's why it's not linear. But it has absolutely nothing to do with uh, whether it's dissipative or not. It only has to do with whether the IV relationship is linear or not. And it is a time derivative and it happens to be linear. Okay. Okay, let's look at a simple uh, construction of a capacitor. The way this is made. Again, this is just a depiction. The practical capacitor doesn't have to be made like this. It just has to have two conductors which are separated from each other. And two terminals are connected to it. A, B, A and B. Okay. I described the capacitor by its IV relationship, but I think you already know what it is. Uh, if I apply a voltage across the capacitor, what happens is, so let's say this is certain V on the upper plate where this V is applied, the positive terminal of V, uh, the plate connected to the positive uh, terminal of V, there will be a positive charge, there is a charge, I mean that uh, whether it's positive or negative depends on the value of V, the charge depends on this voltage V and it's given by C times V. And similarly on the other plate there will be an equal and negative charge and that will be minus C. Okay, if I call this terminal A, this is QA and QB. Okay, so what a capacitor does is to show store charge and the stored charge Q equals C times V. Okay, now first of all, we have to interpret properly what this store charge is. This means that on one plate there is plus C times V and on the other plate there is minus C times V which is plus and which is minus, that depends on which is the plus terminal of V and which is the minus terminal of V. Okay. And also, this relationship Q equals CV, you see that this is somewhat similar to 
V equals R times I. Okay. And this makes linearity even more obvious. Okay. Now, how do we get the relationship between uh, I and V? We know that the current is rate of change of charge. What happens is as this voltage changes, the charge on the upper plate changes. And how will it change? The way it will change is by drawing current from this wire or pushing current into that wire. Okay. This charge has to come from somewhere and it has to come from this wire. Uh, that means that the current in this wire will be dependent on change of voltages. Okay. And the current will be the rate of change of charge which will be C times the rate of change of voltage. Okay, so that's how it comes about. And from this relationship, if you plot Q versus V, it will be a straight line passing through the origin and that will be a linear relationship. And the IV relationship is simply the time derivative of this. And time derivative is a linear operator. So that relationship is also linear. Okay. So a capacitor shows charge Q equals CV and that's a linear element. Any questions about the capacitor? Okay. Now, my next question is, is uh, can the voltage across the charge change uh, instantaneously? The question is, can the voltage across the capacitor change instantaneously? Now, uh, I think one person said yes and a number of people said no. My question was, can the voltage across the capacitor change instantaneously? That is, can it be one value and then suddenly change to another value? Okay. Now, it is possible. I have to, I mean, normally you hear that a capacitor holds its voltage and it cannot change instantaneously, but we have to qualify that. Okay. If it changes instantaneously, what it means is that if you plot I versus T, it will be 0 and here it will go to infinity and that is denoted by an impulse and then it can go to 0. So what we really mean is that if the currents are finite, the capacitor cannot change its voltage instantaneously. Okay. An instantaneous change in the capacitor voltage will demand an infinite current and that is uh, uh, in, will demand an infinite current. So if the currents are restricted to be finite then it cannot change its voltage instantaneously. So if you allow an infinite current which is not practical but in theory it is possible then the voltage can change instantaneously. And one way is if you have a voltage source across the capacitor and the value of the voltage source changes instantaneously then the voltage across the capacitor has to be exactly equal to the voltage across the voltage source and it will also change instantaneously. Okay. But in this case what happens is an infinite amount of current will be drawn at the instant of the voltage change. Okay. 
Oh, finally, the last of the uh, simple elements that two terminal elements is the inductor. Okay. And the symbol for an inductor, I think you are all familiar with, it is like a coil. Again, I will define V and I in this consistent direction. Now, it turns out that the inductor and capacitor are dual elements of each other. What does the capacitor do? We already discussed that. It stores charge and the amount of charge is C times the voltage across the capacitor. And in case of an inductor, it also stores something. It stores energy in the form of magnetic field. A capacitor stores energy in the form of the electric field between the plates. This also it stores magnetic flux. Okay. We will not worry about the details of construction of the inductor and how much flux it stores and so on. But just like a capacitor uh, stores charge, it stores flux and the amount of flux linkage that is stored is given by some number L which is called the inductance of the inductor times the current through the inductor. Okay. So, this C, the constant of proportionality is called the capacitance for a capacitor and it is measured in farads. So, 1 farad will store 1 coulomb charge, 1 coulomb of charge when 1 volt is applied across it. And similarly, this is the inductance and it is measured in Henry. Okay. And it turns out that 1 Henry is the inductance which will store 1 Weber of flux when uh, 1 ampere of current is applied to the inductor. Okay. Now, a capacitor had a current which is basically the rate of change of uh, uh, charge and which turned out to be C times the rate of change of voltage. Okay. And the dual of this holds true for the inductor. The voltage across the inductor will be the rate of change of uh, plus linkage through the inductor and that will be L times di by dt. Okay. So, you can see it is the exact counterpart of that. There is a question from Priyanka. Please go ahead. Priyanka? Okay. So, the inductor is the counterpart of the capacitor. You can see that the role of uh, voltage and current are reversed if you compare it to a capacitor. In a capacitor, the current is the time derivative of the voltage and here the voltage is the time derivative time derivative of the current. Now, the question is, is the inductor linear? This is a question for all the participants. Okay, so as uh, I think many of you guessed it correctly this time and it is linear, okay, because a current I1 will give a voltage L times di1 by dt and a current I2 would give a voltage L times di2 by dt. I am assuming that 
you are thinking of uh, current source I1 applied to the inductor, current source I2 applied to the inductor. And if I apply a current of uh, I1 plus I2, I will get L times d by dt I1 plus I2 and that will be L di1 by dt plus L di2 by dt. Okay. So, inductor is also a linear element. If you apply two currents individually, you get two voltages and if you apply the two currents together, that is if you apply the sum of the two currents, then you will have a voltage that is the sum of the individual voltages. Okay. So, this is also linear. Now, the only uh, one point of uh, confusion that can arise sometimes with uh, inductors is that in elementary te uh, physics textbooks, you will see that the current will oppose the change in flux and it is minus uh, L d i by d t and here we have said it is uh, L d i by d t. Now, there is no contradiction at all here. Uh, in physics textbooks, usually they do not show the sign convention. What they uh, mean is that if there is a current going here and it tries to change, then their convention is to measure the voltage like this. Okay, with uh, plus on the bottom and minus on the top where I is flowing that way. And we will use this convention that is the passive sign convention that is consistent for our purposes. So, in this polarity it will be minus L di by dt and in this polarity it is plus L di by dt. Okay. Also, another thing is I showed you the simple construction of a, a resistor and that of a capacitor. But I will not do that for the inductor because it is rather complicated. But uh, whatever it is, it will consist of some coils of wire and uh, <coughs> the measurement of inductance depends on the geometry of the uh, geometry of how the coil is wound and what material is used and so on. Again, we do not have to worry about that. In fact, uh, part of what you learn in this course is that you can describe the element by the voltage at the terminals of the element and the current through the terminals of the element and not worry about the internal details okay that is for uh, that is for another place and time for us as long as we know the voltage the relationship between the voltage across the terminals and current through the terminals we can describe them with some relationship and with that we can do circuit analysis okay now this is how this is like a hierarchy of explanations and this is how we have to build up right we cannot go down to the level of fields every time so we describe all we want with voltages and currents and we can make complicated circuits based on that okay So, we have discussed uh, now independent sources which are the voltage source and the current source. Okay. And we also discussed a certain number of uh, linear elements a resistor which follows Ohm's law a capacitor so why we are related by and an inductor whose IV are related by okay. and these uh, have similar quantities that have this proportionality relationship. Okay, they are not voltages and currents in this case it is the charge and in the case of the inductor it is the flux linkage. Okay. And these make it even more obvious that uh, elements are linear and the derivative operator itself is linear. So, all these are linear elements. Okay. 
Now, another question is, can the current in an inductor change instantaneously? Again, many people said, uh, no, it cannot change instantaneously. We have to qualify this statement, okay? Now, it can change inst instantaneously if you allow for an infinite voltage across the inductor, okay? If you restrict the voltage to be a finite value, which of course is a practical case, but uh, in theory, it can be infinite. So, if you restrict the voltage to a finite value, then the current cannot change instantaneously, okay? So that sort of brings us to the end of uh, this lecture. Now in the next lecture, we'll discuss uh, what is known as a mutual inductor. It turns out that uh, you can have two coils close to each other. Again, we'll not worry about the physical construction of these things, where the flux induced by one coil can link with the other coil. So the voltage across one coil depends on current not only through itself, but also on current through another coil. We'll discuss that one and a number of other things. Now today what we did was, first of all, we established what is known as the passive sign convention and discussed uh, several two terminal elements, the voltage source, current source and resistor, capacitor and the inductor. We also looked at issues of uh, what is meant by linearity, a resistor, capacitor and inductor are linear, uh, but the voltage source and current source are not. Now for us, what is meant by linearity is that if it obeys superposition, then it means it uh, is a linear element. And so, what is superposition? Superposition says that if you have uh, two individual uh, uh, inputs, you will get certain outputs. Now, if you combine the inputs and apply it, the output should be the combination of the individual outputs. Okay, that is meant by, uh, that is what is meant by superposition. And from this, it will be implied that if you apply a zero input, you should get a zero output. Okay, if you don't get that, then it cannot be a linear element. Now, by that criteria, by, the, by that criterion, the voltage source and current source are not linear, whereas the resistor, capacitor and inductor are not linear, are linear, okay? So that you should be able to recognize and also you should be able to apply the passive sign convention without confusion. That is only the way, only the polarity with which voltages and currents are measured. It doesn't say anything about whether the actual voltage and current that are present are positive or not, okay? So I'll take some last questions and end this lecture. Yes, Subhashish. Okay, it appears that uh, there are no more questions. I just have some announcements. Basically, whatever I uh, mentioned earlier, I am going to repeat now. Srikant? What is the question? Yes. Yes, please go ahead. I was asking that for equivalency of initial variable, we will have to take the superposition to initial variable. Yes, I mean, if you want to check for linearity, you have to check for superposition principle. The question is, how do you test for linearity? And to test for linearity, you have to 
apply superposition and then see if it is valid or not. Okay. Now, of course, based on uh, elementary math, you will know, I mean, if it's a proportional relationship, if V equals IR, that will follow superposition. And similarly, if it is proportional to derivative and so on, it will also obey superposition because the derivative is a linear operator. Okay. So, after some experience, you will be able to simply look at the relationship and see if it is linear or not. Okay. Yeah, from the uh, IV relationship, the current, uh, the voltage is, sorry, the current is T times dV by dt, uh, you can say that it is linear, okay, if you already know the, uh, know that the time derivative is a linear operator and so on. Now, if you are not sure, you can test it and see, okay, the derivative is linear operator, what it means is, if you take the, if you differentiate the sum of two functions, you will get uh, the sum of derivatives of the individual function, okay, that is linear. Okay, so with that we come to the end of the lecture.